Okay, I think we'll be able to wrap it up with this module, the fourth critique module. And we start with a scene that's an interesting looking scene, but it's just got too much happening in it for the viewer to take in. We've got the material that's happening in the photographs in the background on the wall, the big wall display. Those by themselves are really interesting. We do have a connection here between this man walking his dog and this woman walking her dog, which you can't see. If we could see the woman and her dog below this sign, this would be a really cool shot. We've got an interesting thing happening over here, but the tree is obscuring it. We've got cars in here that are messing with the scene. There's just too much going on. And besides that, it's crooked. Let's take a look and see what I mean. Here's the uh, uh, eyedropper with the ruler tool. Let's run it across the top of this wall. Straighten this layer. And it's off a little. Fortunately, that's pretty easy to correct. But while we're correcting it, let's look at some of the things in here we could get rid of. The sky is doing nothing for us. So I'm going to get rid of that. This car is a problem out on the corner here. So let's get rid of that. This bizarre little shadow here could go. Bring up this bottom a little. Now we've eliminated some of the irritating distractions, but we really need to be able to get rid of the car. The gag almost in this in this shot is this woman and her dog. Of course, we can only see the dog's rear and this shot. So it's a cool concept. The idea behind it really kind of works, but it needs a little more execution to pull this off really well. So let's go on to the next one. Okay, here we have a nice shot of a rose. It's a good close-up shot. It appears to be pretty sharp. The rose is an interesting multicolored rose. The concept of taking the flower and moving it a little off center or quite a bit off center is a good one. The only thing to remember is if you have a natural movement in your shot, and in this case, the rose is looking this way, is looking toward the right side of the screen whether it's a rose or an animal or a person if that's the case then that's the direction the move main movement is going give it a little room to move so it would be better if this rose were offset but over on this side of the image so the composition of it could be improved a bit. It's cool that he's caught some water droplets up on the petals. If you're going to do a lot of rose shots or a lot of flower shots, a lot of photographers will carry around a little spritz bottle with water or glycerin in it to create some of these droplets on the flowers. It seems to make them a little more interesting to deal with. Otherwise, if this is what we have, then what I would do is come in and crop crop this down a little and see if we can reduce that feeling of it being squeezed up against the side of the, the shot all that much. And if we're going to center it, then that almost square composition works um, a little bit better. So really think about what direction is going on in your shot. Where are the leading lines? Where are people looking? What direction are things moving? That's going to create that direction. And if you slam it up against one of the walls, it's going to feel crowded. So you need to give it a little more room to operate.
Okay, let's grab the next one. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. It's a nice shot of, I'm assuming this is downtown L.A. with the city hall here. Looks like it's right off of the old Dragnet police badge. But it'd be nice if we had a little more detail in here. This is so dark, I'm not sure that there is any information at all in there. And we can check that fairly easily if we go to image adjustments curves and we hold down the alt key and click in this area take a look at what's happening in the input what is it telling us we're getting zero there's nothing there Ooh, there's one you can forget that up here we've got some data that's 44 We've got something we can play with there. How about over here? Eight. Well, we could bring that up a little. Zero. Zero. Thirty. We've actually got some tone over here. And in the building. So these bushes are pretty much a lost cause, but we can bring up these buildings pretty well. So... We're going to do the good old layer, layer mask routine. I'm going to make this a screen layer to lighten up at least the buildings a little bit. I'm going to bring this back down. And now I want to create a layer mask. What you've watched in the past is that I've done a reverse mask by cr creating the layer mask and then using Control-I to invert that mask. But if I hold down the Alt key while I click on the layer mask icon, then it comes up as a reversed mask. So that's happened already. There isn't much else I need to do. So let's see what happens now if I use a white brush to try to bring some of this back in. Now, I'm not getting very much here, but I want to set up this mask for a secondary mask, so I want this area clear on the mask. So if I look down here, I've painted virtually this whole bottom edge in. Okay, now I want to duplicate this. And that's going to bring that up even a little more. Now, I might want to take my buildings back down a little. So if I go to a black brush, which it already is, and set that opacity way down, now I can kind of subtly bring those back down a little. Now, do you remember from a previous file doing the stamp visible where it was command, alt, shift, E, and it created this new layer? Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that layer. And I'm going to make it a multiply layer. Bring that sky down a little. And once again, I want to have a reversed or an inverted mask. So 
I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, click on this, and I come up with the inverted mask. Need a white brush. I don't want all that much. I don't want it as strong as that was. Now, you'll notice I was sweeping across the building, so I'm darkening this building, which I don't really want to do. Because this is a very soft brush, if you look over here at the icon, you can see this is graduated really nice and smoothly. I don't have to build a graduated mask. I could do that, but there's no real reason for it. So now I can go back, go back to a white brush, I'm sorry, a black brush, and paint over those areas. Well, now I want this to be back up pretty strong. I can clean this up by going back to my white brush, getting a little tiny one here, picking up that edge, a little too strong. There we go. And now we've made things a little more dramatic and a little more noticeable. We could bring this sky down a little more by using a luminosity mask. And I could do the same thing here. I could do another stamp visible, do all of that, but instead I'm just going to flatten it because I'm going to live with what I've got here for our purposes. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to make it a luminosity map or a luminosity blend mode rather. On this layer, I'm going to come up to image adjustments black and white. Now you can see this icon turned to black and white. Now what I want to do is click uh, and bring down this. So what is that actually? Well, if I hold down this key, I can see pretty much where that is. So I'm going to darken that. By playing with these tones, I can really affect how this picture looks. And the cool thing about digital is you can do that work. If you don't like it, you just get rid of that. There's with it, there's without it. Did it help? Nah, I don't think so. So I'm going to get rid of that. That's all it takes. I would probably darken the sky just a little bit, but I think at this point I would more likely burn it down than anything. Okay. Okay. Remember your dynamic ranges when you shoot this. You really did a nice job in this sky not letting this blow out. But I think maybe it could have handled just a little more exposure, maybe enough to bring up some of these, some of this detail, and maybe some of this. Okay. As we get later into this, I'll show you how to make a nearly perfect mask for this really easily, but we'll wait on that. So let's see what else we have. Well, here we have another shot with an embarrassment of riches. There is wonderful, cool texture all over this shot, but it is tending to fight with itself. I'm going to make a wild guess that maybe the whole purpose is this bird hidden in here. I don't know that for sure, but maybe. And that would make an interesting shot by itself. 
if you had a lens to pull that shot off. So let's pretend like you did and see what happens if we crop it into that and we get rid of some of this really confusing stuff that's neat. I love all this texture, but it's conflicting with our main shot. It's not helping us get to the real image. Bring that up a little bit. So now we have a better composed shot with this bird almost camouflaged in all of it. Because of the low res, I can't play with this too much because it's losing detail. Not because the shot wasn't sharp, but because I've enlarged it so much doing this. So it's, it's hard to really show you this effect. But again, if this is your subject, then let us have a better chance of finding it in all of this other material. And if not, then there are other possible choices in here. All of this texture, there are a number of areas in here that could make a really interesting photograph. This, just playing with these textures here could be fascinating. Playing across this part might be cool. Again, you've got this strong line going in this way. You don't want to crowd them up against the side there too much. Perhaps a shot like that might be a good one with the uh, bird in the, in the bushes. There are a number of options. Let me warn you something. At the fair, frequently, frequently, the judges will comment. They'll look at a picture and they'll say, I know that in this picture is a really good photograph. But it's not the viewer's and it's not the judge's job to find it. It's the job of the photographer to show it to us, to let us see just that. And that's kind of what's happening here. There's some, some interesting photographs to be contained within this primary photograph. But it's your job to show it to us. Okay? So let's move on. The rest of the shot's technically really pretty well done. And it's picked up this pattern nicely. Oh, here we have a nice narrative filled shot. This beautiful sunset. We're getting close to the sunset with an empty bench on there. How many sunsets has that bench watched? If it could talk, what would it tell us about the endless string of days that has passed in front of it? About friendly lovers that have sat on there and held each other and watched the sunset. What could it tell us? Wow, what a, what a cool concept in this image. I like the general layout. The composition is strong. The only thing I really, really, really wish you had done is to have not lost this. And maybe what this would have taken is to have put your camera on a tripod and done two shots one for the sky, one for this. And then what you do is blend them. If you bring them in as layers, put one on top of another. If your camera's on the tripod, they should register. So let's say, I don't know if there's any detail to recover, but we'll see what we can do here. Let's say this was the shot where you had exposed for the sky. See, there's not much in there to pull in, but for our purpose, here's where it's blown out on this spike over here. But we'll say that was one shot. This was the other shot. Now, because this would have been exposed correctly, you would have gotten detail in here that I can't pull out of this. But with this, 
you would simply create the layer mask, use a black brush on that white mask. Remember, you're always using the brush color that's opposite of the mask color. And with that, let's make a bigger brush using the bracket keys. Nice big soft brush. And you could blend those together. If you overshot that blend, then you could bring that back. Now, this top area, here's one interesting fact or technique of working with the two layers. What you've got now, let's go down and look at these layers. The top layer is the lighter one. The bottom layer is this dark one. And what we're doing now with this mask, where it's white, we're looking at the top layer. Where it's black, we're looking through the top layer to this bottom layer. So that means if we come down and activate the bottom layer, we can play with it and see the effect beneath this top layer. So if I decided that this had a little too much yellow in it, or I wanted to change the tone of this somehow, I could, for example, come in here, pick up my photo filter, and maybe change that. Let's say I wanted to cool that a little bit, cool that sunset down. Maybe what I'd like to do is add some red to it. Can you see what's happening? It's You're only seeing it in that area where the mask has been removed. This gives us an enormous amount of power in what we can do to affect these two images together. This is something to play with because um, it gives you exquisite ability to not only make changes, but to see the effect of those changes while they're happening. This is really Really nice shot. All right, and here comes our last shot of what was turned in um, for critique. Another sunset shot. I don't recognize where this is, but it's a nice sunset shot. It could stand just a little more exposure so we could tell what this is. It's now blended into the shadows in the background, so it's a little hard to determine what is it we are really looking at? But overall, the color is cool. It, well, in this case, the color is warm, but you know, the outlook is nice. It looks really pretty attractive, like it'd be fun to just stand there and watch the colors fade as these pastel colors go. So this is a nice shot. I would, again, like to see a little more exposure down in these shadows. I don't know if there's anything there to even bring out, but let's take a quick look. We'll take a look through the uh, levels, and we'll just bring stuff up to lighten it. Well, there is a little there. There is a little separation in there. So it might be possible to do that as a blend. Let's make this, let's do it on the bottom one. Something as simple as a levels adjustment. Yeah, see here's all the black that's been lost. Okay, now we'll go back to our top one. We'll turn that into our layer mask. Because it's white, we need to have a black brush. And I think we need to stay fairly subtle. 
in there enough just to separate <clears throat> enough just to separate out some of these tones. So that we can see what that is. And now what we may want to do, I'm going to flatten that, is bring the sky down even a little bit darker. So let's go to this. We'll make this a multiply layer. Interesting vignette here that may be your lens shade on the camera. But let's make that a layer mask. I'm going to make a big soft brush here. I'm going to bring a little of that sky back by changing the brush color to white. And now let's see what we've done with with this. We'll flatten it out. Make a snapshot of it. it should be a subtle change. Well, maybe it's not so subtle. As to what we've done. Okay, you guys have done some really good work for your best shot. That gives you a benchmark. I've given most of you really good grades because, again, you're all starting from very different points. What I'm going to be looking for now is are you improving? Are you watching the critiques? Are you taking the information I'm giving you and using it to make your shots better? So... We'll be back doing this with the next assignment. Meantime, have fun, keep shooting, and I'll see you later.